In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can transform your tired and dated old kitchen with a lick of paint and some new knobs and handles, just like I did here a few weeks ago. Now, these kitchen units were originally hand painted and installed back in 2010. We didn't have any choice as to whether it was hand painted or spray painted at the time, but in actual fact, in hindsight, it's been a great thing to have had a hand painted kitchen because it's meant it's been easily repairable when we've had scrapes and kicks and bashes from the children as they've been growing up. But if you've got a spray painted kitchen, don't let that stop you repainting it. It just means that the choice of rollers you use is going to be critical in terms of helping you achieve the finish that you're looking for. So looking at today's toolkit, we've got Zinza BIN Primer, my favourite primer at the moment. This also comes in a spray can format and I'll be revealing in the video which version I preferred using for this particular job. We then got an old mini roller tray which I covered in foil to make it reusable. Remember the BIN is a shellac based paint so the brushes and roller trays can't be washed in water. And I've used these simulation mohair sleeves on my mini roller for both the primer coat and the top coat. I have in the past used these foam sleeves particularly for the top coat but I've gone back to using these mohair sleeves because I really like the finish that you get with them. And whilst I'll mostly be using a roller I found a small 12 millimeter paintbrush a useful tool for getting into hard to reach spaces. Get yourself a roll of sandpaper. This was 120 grit, which is perfect for our hand painted units. Now, some people will say a finer grit like 180 or 220 would be more appropriate. And that might particularly be the case if you're sanding down previously spray painted surfaces. I found this rubber sanding block really comfortable to use, but if you haven't got one of these, just use a piece of wood. My little light Ryobi 12 volt drill driver is my go-to tool for removing fiddly bits of hardware, but a manual screwdriver is fine if you haven't got one. And finally, perhaps most controversially, I've gone for Valspar wood and metal interior eggshell paint mixed to a farrow and ball color. And as usual, details of all today's tools will be in the description at the end of the video. Now, in my day job, I get to visit some pretty cool refurbishment projects and it was on one particular job I got the inspiration for today's kitchen facelift. I'm pouring over some paint charts with my other half and opting for these Victorian cabinet knobs and cup handles from Ironmongery Direct has put in train a pretty fundamental facelift of this tired, insipid looking country kitchen. So my advice to you is when planning your project, go on the internet, go on some great sites like Pinterest and that way you'll be able to get reference points and inspiration for your scheme. The first step is removing the units and the hardware. I know it's tempting to leave everything in situ, but it's much easier if you take everything apart prior to sanding and repainting your units. Step two, sanding. Now, whilst it's really tempting not to bother to sand prior to priming, it's really important to do so because the sanding provides a really good key for your primer coat. For me, this prep work also involved filling a hole left in the dishwasher cover where the completely inadequate spindles on the handles had kept pulling out and I'd had to glue and screw the handle back to the cover of the dishwasher. So for this, I used my two part wood filler. For more information on how to use this, check out the link coming up on the screen now. Step three, priming. Now again, it's really tempting not to bother with the priming stage, but you'll find if you don't, that the top coat just will not adhere nearly as well to your units. And quite often you get a sort of separating effect where you paint the top coat on and it starts to part, revealing the paint below. Now, as I said earlier, I did start using my spray primer on the units. It's wonderful stuff and obviously removes the need to clean any paint brushes but I don't have a great setup. The area that I was spraying in wasn't really appropriate. And as you can see here, I was wasting a lot of spray around the edge of the unit. So I decided to abandon that and go back to the tin of Zinza BIN that you saw in the toolkit visual earlier. And because you can recoat in 45 minutes, you get so much more done each day than you would with a standard primer, which takes about two hours to dry. For more information on using this as a primer, check out the link coming up on the screen now. So we got away with one coat of the BIN primer, but if you're feeling conscientious or your units are a particularly dark color, you might want to use two. So we're on to the final stage, applying two coats of interior eggshell. And for this, we use Valspar's premium wooden metal interior eggshell water-based paint. 
Now, a lot of you out there are gonna hate the fact that I've used this Valspar paint, which I believe is exclusive to B&Q Screwfix. I'm not being paid by them to promote this. My wife actually picked it up from B&Q. And the reason we did so is twofold, really. Number one, I feel I have responsibility on this channel for being a bit of a fool guy, trying things out and letting you make the decision as to whether you want to buy them yourself. Also, I want to try out things that are accessible from a price point of view. Listen, I don't normally buy paint from DIY stores. I generally buy my paint from decorator centers, typically Johnstones, because the coverage is great and I think the accuracy of their color mixing is also really good. But we bought this because it is half the price of the Farron Ball original or the Johnstones equivalent, which is coming up on the screen now. This kitchen isn't gonna be here forever, so we didn't wanna be paying the earth for a paint, particularly given with all the wear and tear it takes, we are gonna be touching this up on a reasonably regular basis anyway. Now stay tuned till the end of the video because I will be giving you my verdict on this paint. Remember, the prices on screen are for the bespoke mixed paint colors, the brilliant white version of Leyland, Johnstones, Dulux paint is gonna be obviously a lot cheaper than these bespoke mixed colors. So then it was a process of applying two coats of the acrylic eggshell to the kitchen units. And I've gotta say, as I'm sure will be the case with you, we have to fit this in around a busy family life with all the challenges that brings. We did the kitchen in stages. Firstly, the island, and then the rest of the kitchen in three separate stages. And I really wanted to show you this image of us painting whilst trying to prepare a Sunday lunch. So with the painting complete, it was time to reinstall the hardware that we removed earlier. And by removing that hardware earlier, it gave us a great opportunity to repair bent hinges and also to replace broken or missing magnet catches, thereby giving the kitchen a total refurb. So let's have a quick chat about the cabinet furniture we bought. We needed quite a lot of hardware for this job with 11 cabinet cut pool handles and 18 Victorian cabinet knobs. In addition, of course, to the magnet catches that I've just shown you. And we found the cabinet cup handles at two pounds 82. Annoyingly, the cabinet knobs were six pounds 96 when I bought them, but they're currently on sale for three pounds 98. But even at the original price, we found these to be incredibly good value considering their quality. Because these cup handles don't have visible screws on the front, you need to rebate the threads that appear on the rear of the cup handle into your drawer. And you can see here with a bit of masking tape, you can get the depth that you need to drill to exactly right. Which then leaves a simple job of screwing the cup handles into place. Now, I've got a really simple trick for getting the placement of the cup handles consistent across all the units in your kitchen. Once I decided upon the position of the first cup handle, I've simply got a piece of baking paper. Yeah, I know, a little bit DIY, but there you go. I then mark with a biro the position of that baking paper along the top of the drawer, which you kind of don't need because I've also marked it by creasing the baking paper as well. And then I've got the original hole left by the knobs that were there before, I was simply able to mark that hole on the baking paper and similarly the hole that I've created for my cup handles. And then that has given me an exact template to then roll those cup handles out across all the other units in my kitchen. And then you can just use a braddle or other sharp object to mark through the template into each drawer. Now, there is one more point to make about the placement of these cup handles on your drawer. And that is to make the cup handle look central on the drawer, as you can see me demonstrating here, the cup handle is actually located higher up on the drawer. There's some sort of optical illusion at play here and you need to do this because you're looking down at the drawer from above. Now, last point to make. This particular knob comes with two lengths of fixing. And what I tend to do is select the appropriate fixing, make a mark with a marker pen, then you know when you take the fixing out where you've got to cut it. I tend to cut these because they're quite soft metal with a pair of pliers, and then to polish the thread so that you can then insert it back into the knob or cup handle 
I give it a couple of turns on my belt sander. And that way you're tidying up the screw thread that was damaged when you cut through it so that it can easily be inserted into the knob. So all that remained for me to do was to reattach all the cupboards. So three weeks since painting this kitchen, how are we getting on with the paint and would I recommend it to you lot? It's really hard to answer that question because I think what you require from your paint really depends on the individual circumstances of your project. Take for example our situation. This paint was very much an impulse buy. My wife happened to be in our local town. We were desperate to get these units painted and she phoned me up and yes, I suggested she go ahead and buy it. The price was a big driver for us. We don't know how long we're gonna have this kitchen here. It was a bit of an experiment. And so in that sense, we really didn't have a great deal to lose. And of course, I thought it would make some really interesting content for this video. The other point to make is I'm a firm believer that rooms like this that get such heavy traffic are gonna chip. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have had five or six chips on the various units around this room in the three weeks since we painted it. Now, I don't know whether that's because the units are from a quick growing, soft, low quality pine. Now, I don't know whether you've ever tried varnishing a floor or painting any sort of soft wood. If you've got a soft wood, no matter how hard the paint is, it is gonna chip. That said, this paint does chip reasonably easily and you can see in this visual now just how easily I can scrape it off with my finger. However, the other point to make is in a kitchen where you've got heavy traffic like this and where you're gonna to wanna to touch up regularly, I have been interested to see just how easily you can touch up with this paint with little or no flashing. Flashing obviously is when you do a little touch up and you can see the new paint overlaying the old. A lot of painters would say you can't touch up, you have to repaint the entire unit or the entire wall. However, what you cannot deny about this paint is the reasonably abysmal reviews that it's received. Looking at Trustpilot, you've got only 32% saying it's excellent, with 61% saying it's bad or poor. Now those sort of statistics cannot be ignored. We don't of course know whether they're talking about the wood and metal eggshell here or the emulsion, but there's another important point here. We only needed this two and a half litre pot. In actual fact, we've done this entire kitchen with just half the pot, but sadly one litre wouldn't have quite been enough. One of the things that they say on the reviews is that the accuracy of the mixing, as in the mixing we've done here to get this bespoke color is not good. Now my wife says when she got this mix, they actually used the Farinball code. But the next time we both went in, the technician said all the codes had been wiped off the computer and they could instead use their sensor to actually look at the color swatch on the chart. I would not be confident using that process to get my paint mixed, particularly if I wanted to go back to get a, another pot further down the line. But if you have a project where you don't know how much paint you want, or you're likely to need additional pots of the same color, which is a bespoke color you've had mixed, my advice would be to avoid paints like this. I would also say if you're approaching a new job where you've just installed a new kitchen, a new piece of furniture, whatever it is, cupboards, wardrobes, and you're, you care deeply about the finish and the durability, again, I wouldn't use this. I would go with one of the established paint brands where the reviews are consistently good. So that's about it for today. I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please do click on the like button below and let me know in the comments section what you think of Valspar. I think I know the answer to that. Or alternatively, if you've experimented and used other brands of paint, which brands of paint you find really useful. Because what I'm trying to do, ideally with this channel, is produce a big body of opinions which people can surf through to get the right product for their project. So I'm really grateful for you, to you all for wading in with your comments and reviews after each of my videos. Finally, if you're new to my channel, as I always say, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.